This is going to be Genesis chapter 19. And you know this chapter, it's about the two angels come to Lot in Sodom. And the men of Sodom try to break down the door and get a hold of the two angels. But starting in verse 1, it says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Now these two angels coming to Sodom to his house there, it reminds me of Hebrews 13, 2, which says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So, Lot entertains these strangers, and he entertained angels unawares. The two angels from chapter 18 are the same two angels that show up here in town, in Sodom, and the Lord is about to destroy the place. But he's not going to leave a righteous man behind. This shows me that even two or three people matter to the Lord. One or two people matter. The Lord could have said, oh well, one or two righteous men feeling my wrath won't hurt. He could have said that, but he didn't say it. Lot sat in the gate, and this means he had a high up position at so on, in Sodom. Can you imagine the compromise you would have to have to be a politician in Sodom? And get voted in. Can you imagine? But Genesis 19, 2 said, And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So notice some more things about the angels. Lot, it seems, as far as we know, doesn't even realize that these two men are angels so far. So they look just like a man, and obviously they aren't incredibly big or incredibly small. It doesn't seem that they would have a halo or anything like that that would say, Hey, Lot, we're angels. It doesn't seem that they have anything like that. Or, you know, Lot would know they were angelic. Notice something else. Lot wants them to come in and wash their feet. And they do. So this shows an angel can take on physical reality. Before they came, before they come in, they decline what Lot says, and they say, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So this shows me they're fearless. They aren't afraid of men. I mean, they're going to stay out all night in Sodom. That would be a scary place to stay out all night in. I mean, why would they be afraid of men? Because Second Peter 2.11 says they are greater in power and might than men. And Genesis 19.3, it says, And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. And he entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Notice once again, the angels can do things in physical reality, even though they are spirits. I mean, Hebrews 1.14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits? But they can take on physical reality. Lot made them a feast, and he baked them some bread. He made them all kinds of food. Apparently, Sodom had all kinds of food and goods. I mean, if they were hungry, they came to the right place. And if you look in Ezekiel 16, 49, it talks about Sodom. And it says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Now look at the iniquity of, the, of Sodom. It says, Pride, fullness of bread... An abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. So they had so much food and so much pride and so much idle time that it rent them. Rent, that means ruined. It rent them. They had too much food, too much pride, too much idle time. I mean, those are bad combinations. If you're just sitting around eating all the time and you got all this time on your hands to get into all kinds of wicked stuff and then you got too much pride to turn to the Lord, you know, that's not going to turn out too good. But they obviously had plenty of food, plenty of goods. They, were, they had fullness of bread. Lot probably gained a lot of weight when he went to Sodom. In Genesis 19.4, it says, but before they, which is the angels, before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the, hound round, compassed the house round, 
both old and young, all the people from every quarter. So before the angels and Lot and all them could lay down for the night and hang it up, the men of the city compassed the house round about, all around the house. Can you imagine this? This sounds like something out of a horror movie. All the men of the city, ain't no telling them what they look like. I can't even imagine what the men of Sodom look like. Obviously, the angels probably wouldn't need sleep anyway. I mean, I guess they would just lay there until bright and early, and then they would head on. But can you imagine what the angels would be thinking while they were laying there? Probably, they were probably thinking, these people are crazy. I bet they think people are crazy because they don't have sinful flesh. They don't understand what you have going on. They just take orders from the Lord and they accomplish the things the Lord wants done. But the men of Sodom crowd around the house. And I guess they're going to stay out all night and sleep in all day. you got to watch doing that too. You know, unless you got a good excuse for it. Like you work third shift or you got a crying baby or you got a crazy wife or something. I mean, in those cases, I'm sure God understands you staying up all night and then having to sleep a little bit later. But staying up all night and sleeping in all day is not a very good habit to get into. And then remember, in Ezekiel 16:49, it said Sodom had abundance of idleness. Too much time on your hands is not a good thing. If they had been working with their hands hard enough... They would have probably got their hind ends in bed. They wouldn't have been out doing this crazy stuff, trying to get with these angels. It says in Proverbs 4.16, For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they, have, unless they cause some to fall. So they sleep not, except they have done mischief. They're going to go out and do some mischief before they get in bed. And you know... Sodom, in Genesis thirteen thirteen it says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So this ain't some friendly people trying to, you know, ba baking these angels some cake and trying to be neighborly here. The people were gathered around Lot's house and their wicked men. And notice that it said that they're both old and young. It wasn't just the older men who were corrupt but the younger men as well. And when they have drag queens and lesbians and sodomites on children's TV shows today, this reveals that they are trying to corrupt the young. They are after the children. The men of Sodom, both old and young, were compassed around the house. The devil and unclean spirits like to go after the weakest link. They'll go after the young ones. The devil possessed son in Mark 9.21 had been possessed since he was a child. The agenda of homosexuals has always been to get the children. And I remember that movie called Hocus Pocus when I was a kid. And since Halloween's coming up, a lot of people's going to be watching that. And, and those witches, they wanted the children. And I remember this other movie when I was a kid, another stupid uh, Halloween movie called Ernest, Ernest Scared Stupid. And the troll guy in the movie was after the children of the town. Isn't it weird that they're always going after the children? Ain't, ain't that a strange thing? In Genesis 19.5, it says, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So the, the men of Sodom wanted Lot to escort the men, the angels, out. Of course, they didn't know they were angels at the time. They wanted him to bring them out so that they could know them. They didn't want to ask them about their hobbies. They wasn't wanting to get to know about their family or their hometown. They wanted to get to know them, know them, if you know what I mean. Just like Adam knew Eve, his wife. They was trying to get to really know those angels. The men of Sodom were after strange flesh. They could have lain with the angels as the women did in Genesis 6. And Jude, the book of Jude, in verse 7... It says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And you'll notice that verse, it's in context 
right along with those angels. Look at the verse right before it. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And then it talks about Sodom and going after strange flesh. So the things the men of Sodom desired to do were an abomination. In Leviticus 18.22 it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. If you're a man and you lie with another man, that's an abomination. In Leviticus 20.13 it says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They surely... They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. The men of Sodom were in open and unashamed sin. They were out all night seeing what they could get into. In Isaiah 3 and verse 9 it says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them. They declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Notice it says, They declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Their countenance doth witness against them. Many of these people who are sodomized today, their countenance witnesses against them. You see the pride. The, the, they're very unashamed that they live in this openly wicked lifestyle. And they want to recruit your kids to be a part of that lifestyle. In Genesis 19, 6 and 7, And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. He said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Lot knew how perverted the men of Sodom were. The reason homosexuals are called Sodomites is because of Sodom's sex perversion. Notice it isn't only citizens of Sodom who are called Sodomites in the Bible. A lot of people try to say that. But look at Deuteronomy 23, 17. It says, There shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And then in 1 Kings 14, 24, And there were also sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations, which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Sodomites were wicked people in the Bible. It's a wicked sin. Lot calls the Sodomites brethren. Now this picture is a backslid Christian who pretends that everyone is all right with the Lord. While he may not completely agree with sodomy, he probably wouldn't outright condemn it to their face, but might say something like, I, I just don't think it's the Lord's best, guys. I mean, every everybody can do what they want to do, but I just don't think it's the Lord's best with a smile on his face. Kind of like that one famous... TV preacher said on Larry King. Although in this situation, Lot tells them to do not so wickedly. Deep down, even the most compromised saint usually knows it's a vile sin to commit sodomy. And the reason he was sticking his neck out there is because, you know, it was considered uh, just a horrible thing if you take some people into your home and let something like this happen to him. So he was really sticking his neck out because he allowed these men to come into his home and he had to he saw taking care of them just even more than taking care of his own family. And see in second Peter two eight it says, For that righteous man, talking about Lot, dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So it calls Lot a righteous man. It says he's a righteous soul, and it says the people vexed him. The things going on in Sodom deep down bothered him. He had to compromise to sit in the gate. He had to compromise to live there and go along with everything that was going on. And noticed seeing and hearing in seeing and hearing, the things he saw and heard vexed his righteous soul. Many times you put yourself through, there are Christians who will, who want to watch wicked things on TV or listen to, to ungodly music. Their flesh likes the music or whatever else, and it vexes them in seeing and hearing. Something in them, it really bothers them and they don't like it. But there's something in them that does like it, so they keep listening to it. 
It's no different than Lot in Sodom. He's seeing and hearing some wicked things. Deep down, it bothers him. It's it, He has to compromise to, to listen to it. Many times a Christian might watch a movie that says, the Lord's name in vain over and over again, saying GD, mother effort, and all these type of things like that. It gets to them, but then after a while, maybe they get a little bit desensitized to it and it becomes easier. But notice how corrupt Lot has become by living in Sodom. He's willing to bring out his own daughters to them. He says in Genesis 19, 8, Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do you to them as is good in your eyes, only unto those men, unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So he's, now he's sticking his neck out and st standing up to these guys now because he knows it's the right thing for him to take care of the people he put under his roof, but he's still corrupt. Look how corrupt he is. He's willing to bring out his own two daughters to them so that they won't take them in. He said, Do ye to them what is good in your eyes. Man, that's a horrible thing. What is good in man's eyes can be completely vile in the eyes of God. He says, Do ye to them what is good in your eyes. Do you know why such crazy things went on in the book of Judges? Because every man was doing what was right in his own eyes. In Judges 17, 6, it says, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. In insane America, every man is doing what's right in his own eyes. If it feels good to them, then they think it's okay. You can't live your life that way. It must be what's right in the eyes of the Lord. Lot was willing to appease the Sodomites with his virgin daughters. And it slipped my mind last week that Lot has at least, he has to have at least four daughters because two of them are married and two of them are virgins. So he has to have at least four and he could have more children for, for all I know. Lot will allow these Sodomites to ruin his two virgin daughters. And how could he allow that to happen? I'd say you can have them when... I'd, I'd be saying you can have them when you pry them out of my cold, dead fingers. I'd say over my dead body. I wouldn't let my daughters go out to those perverts. There's no telling what those men would have done with Lot's daughters if they would have come out of that house. And I wanted to remind you of a similar story in the book of Judges. If you turn to the book of Judges and look at Judges 19 and verse 22. It says, Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold... The men of the city, certain sons of Belial, so they were children of the devil, beset the house round about, just like in Genesis chapter 19. They got all around the house and beat at the door. They didn't knock. They didn't ring the doorbell. They beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him and remember this is in the book of judges in judges 17 it says men were doing what was right in their own eyes and it says and the man the master of the house went out unto them and said unto them nay my brethren nay i pray you do not so wickedly same thing lot said seeing that this man is coming to mine house do not this folly behold here is my daughter a maiden and his concubine them will I bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. It's almost like it, they saw the act of sodomy so wicked that they would rather them rape their own daughters. It's almost like they saw uh, them raping a woman as a more righteous thing than the act of sodomy. But it says, But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. So this this man, just as corrupt as Lot, lets them take this woman. You see, you shouldn't let them take anybody. You should stand up to them and don't let, take, let them take anybody. They may overpower you, but at least... You went out fighting. 
you know, Lot shouldn't give up his daughters. Lot shouldn't give up the two men that came into his house. But it says here in Judges 19.26, Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door at the man's house where her Lord was, till it was light. And our Lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up, and got him unto unto his place. And when he was coming to his house, he took a knife, and laid hold on his concubine, and divided her, together with her bones, into twelve pieces, and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. See, this is what happens when men do what is right in their own eyes. What a horrible story. And they get more and more wicked as time goes on. Do you know how the Lord describes the days before he comes back? Like the days of Lot. In Luke seventeen twenty eight and 29, it says, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. You see... God describes the time before he comes back like the days of Lot. What's going on? Sodomites, openly, unashamed of their sin, very violent and pushy with their sin. It says in Matthew twenty four twelve, Jesus describing the end times again in Matthew twenty four twelve says, And because iniquity shall, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. When there's so much iniquity like there was in Sodom, the people wax cold. And evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, and only reprobate people with their mind and conscience defiled and seared with a hot iron could abuse someone all night. They would have no love, just like a lion eating its prey while it's still alive isn't thinking about the feelings of the other animal. That's how the men of Sodom were. In Genesis 19.9, it says, And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. So the men of Sodom are like, Stand back. Stand back, Lot. And they pressed sore upon the man. They came to they came near to break the door. Wow, what a peaceful, sweet, calm, and gentle group this is. They're so nice. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people are like, you know, I know that he's a, I know that he's a little gay or whatever, but he's such a nice man. Oh no, this is not some peaceful, sweet, calm, and gentle group of people. They're actually aggressive and intolerant when it comes right down to it. Maybe not when you see them at the drugstore. Maybe not when they're behind the counter at Walmart and you're buying something. They, they talk real nice and sweet to you. But when you're going against them and standing in their way, they will be the most aggressive and violent people. And if it was up to them, if you stood in the way of them being able to fulfill all their sexual fantasies and desires, if you were the one standing in their way, they would have you killed just as quick as they could think. They will not stand for you dis disapproving of their lifestyle. They're going to get those two angelic men to come out and have sex with them, and they're going to do it even if they have to break down the door. It says in Genesis 19.9, And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he, he will need to be a judge. Notice the Sodomites are talking about judging, which is exactly what they talk about today. That's what they always talk about. They, th they say, it's wrong to judge. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.15, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. You see, God's already judged that their wicked lifestyle is wrong. And I've done show you the verses in Leviticus. It talks about it again in Romans chapter 1 where it says, For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. God's already judged it, that that's wrong. All the sins that I've committed, God judged that those were wrong. And I can admit that the sins I've committed in my life are wrong. 
And if the Bible says that your sin that you're committing, homosexuality is wrong, you should be able to admit that that is a horrible sin. Any sexual sin is wrong. A lot of people say, why are you singling out that sin? I'm not singling out that sin. All sins are wrong. It's just that homosexuality seems to be the sin today that men don't want to admit that it's wrong. But if you think about it, in Leviticus 18, it comes out and says, adultery is wrong, incest is wrong, bestiality is wrong. I'm sure we can all admit a man sleeping with a woman that's not his wife, that happens to be another man's wife, you'll admit that's a wrong thing. You admit incest is a wrong thing. You admit bestiality, a man marrying his dog, that's sick. The thing is, homosexuality is mentioned right in the middle of all those things. So if those three things are wrong, that's obviously wrong. So, so the angels, look at what they do. In Genesis nineteen ten and 11, it says, But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So the angels have power to smite people with blindness. And remember, they are greater in power and might. So now the men of Sodom are blind physically and spiritually. They were blind spiritually. Now they're also blind physically. Yet they are still trying to find the door. They're a very determined group of people. Talk about people who cannot control their passions. Even after they've been struck blind, they're wanting those angels so bad, they are going to break down the door. Sexual sin is one of those things that when you give yourself over to it so much, it begins to get in the driver's seat. In Genesis nineteen twelve, And the men said unto Lot, Haste thou here any besides, hast thou here any besides son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. So I'm not sure exactly how many children Lot actually has. We know he's got daughters. We know he's got sons-in-law. It says, Son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters. And Lot was going to give his daughters over to Sodom. The angels tell him to, tell him to get anyone close to him and bring them out of this place. You need to get everyone close to you and bring them out of this world, spiritually speaking. This world and world system is going to be destroyed. It's wicked and it's temporal. In Genesis 19.13, it says, For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Notice something else about the angels. They come to accomplish what God has told them to do, and they are just going to complete the mission. That's their purpose. Verse 14, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. When you have compromised so much that you are a political figure in a place as wicked as Sodom, then you can expect people to take you as a joke if you try to preach to them. Lot seemed as one that mocked. You can't go to work and cuss and tell dirty jokes and treat people like trash and then come in the next day and say, repent, turn to God. You can't do that. They'll say, look who's talking. You need to turn to God. They'll mock you because you'll seem as one that mocketh to them. In Genesis nineteen fifteen, it says, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. First thing in the morning, the angels are rushing Lot to get him out of town. It's a shame they have to tell him to take his wife and daughters. It's like being it's like being in a big city that is about to get an atom bomb dropped on you, and you're the only one that knows about it. You would have a clear path to get on the road and get out, yet look what Lot does. Look what he does in verse 16. It says, And while he lingered, he lingered, he should be hightailing it out of town. When the, Lord, when the Lord warns you to do something, don't linger, just get with it. The men laid hold on upon his hand. They had to get him out. They had to physically get him out. 
and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. The Lord is being merciful to this man. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Notice a great illustration here, though. Look at Lamentations three twenty two and 23. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It is the Lord's mercies that me and you are not consumed. Notice what the angel said to Lot. It says, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. The only reason we won't be consumed is because of the Lord's mercy on us, just like it was on Lot. In Genesis nineteen sixteen, it says, It said, The Lord being merciful to him, the mercy of God is when God keeps you from going through something you deserve. And notice Lamentations 3.23 said, The Lord's mercies are new every morning. And in Genesis 19.15 it says, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot. Morning arose. God's mercy was new. It was new for Lot. New every morning. And it was of the Lord's mercy that he wasn't consumed because his compassion fails not. God was, God was extremely merciful to Lot, allowing the angels to take him out of Sodom, even when he was a backslid compromiser. And verse 17 in Genesis 19 says, And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. This reminds me of the verse in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24:16, when the Jews flee, it says, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. The tribulation saints will have to escape to the mountains. If they won't escape to the, to the mountains, then they're going to see those antichrists and the henchmen coming after them. In Genesis 19:18, And Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Look at that. Lot is in such a backslid condition that he thinks he knows more than the angels of God. Notice that when you talk to someone who is out of fellowship with the Lord, they think they have it all figured out. In verse 19, it says, Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. So he's afraid of what might be up in the mountain. Maybe animals. Maybe hillbillies with deformities that are killers. Maybe Lot is a soul trap listener and he's afraid of what he might see in the dark. You know, this Soul Trap by Joel Tillis. That's a good podcast. I have to give it a shout out. But in Genesis 19.20, Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? So Lot is such a city slicker. He's such a city slicker now that he isn't about to go camping in the mountains. He knows about this little city. But mostly the little cities are affected by the big cities. Maybe he's forgetting that. It says in verse 21, And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken, Haste thee, escape tither, for I cannot do anything till thou become tither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar, entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So he waits till Lot gets out of town before he does this. And this is just like the tribulation. Fire will come down from the sky in the tribulation as well, just like in Revelation 8, 7. Sodom and Gomorrah, it's burned off the map. They burned in their lust and ended up getting burnt to a crisp. Genesis nineteen twenty five, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. The ground was cursed back in Genesis 3, but it was even more cursed in Sodom, so it's also destroyed, just like in the tribulation. Once again, Revelation 8, 7, showing you all the green grass is burnt up, all the trees are burnt up. It says in Genesis nineteen twenty six, but his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So here, 
is a good short verse for you to memorize in Luke seventeen thirty two, which says, Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. She became a pillar of salt. That verse is only three letters, three words. Remember Lot's wife. Remember, she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Don't look back at the world you got out of. Don't wish you could go back and don't think about your stuff you left behind. In Luke 9, 62, Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Back to Genesis. Genesis nineteen twenty seven. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Notice once again, Abraham is an early bird with the Lord on his mind. First thing, he got up early in the morning and stood to the in the place where the where he stood before the Lord. The first thing he thought of was the Lord's plan. He is concerned with what was going to happen on God's calendar, just like we should be. The Lord had told us what the Lord's told us what's going to happen, and I believe the next event is the rapture. And every morning we should wake up and think about maybe it's today. Genesis nineteen twenty eight. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. So Abraham gets a good vision of hell on earth that he could easily use for a sermon illustration. Notice it was as the smoke of a furnace. And Jesus said in Matthew thirteen forty two, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, wailing and gnashing of teeth. So the Sodom became a good picture of hell on earth. Genesis nineteen twenty nine and thirty, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, and he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. So I guess Lot got into Zoar, and he seen that, he, that it was just as wicked as Sodom, even though it was just a little city. He probably knew it would be destroyed as well. So Lot and his daughters are living in this cave. He went from living in the big city to being in a cave. Genesis nineteen thirty one and 32. And the firstborn, Lot's firstborn daughter, said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Notice wine shows up when something sinful is about to take place. It showed up back in Genesis 9 with Noah. It showed up in the case of David and Uriah. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. A perfect illustration is that of that is in Genesis 19 right here. They gave their father drink so that they could look on his nakedness. In this case, so that they could have a child by their own father. In Genesis 19:33, and they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. Notice it says they made their father drink wine. Lot is so messed up, he shouldn't be allowing his daughters to make him do anything especially not drink, but he gets so drunk that he doesn't even know what happened. This is the dangers of alcohol. It says in verse 34, And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Lot just escaped death when he left Sodom, yet he's going to get drunk. You would think Lot and his daughters would be a little shook up after what just happened, but look what they're doing. I mean, we can take into consideration that Lot is traumatized from what happened to his wife, possibly. But still, in Genesis nineteen thirty-five and 36, And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. This is what happens when you... Raise your daughters in Sodom, with every man doing what's right in their own eyes. Genesis nineteen thirty-seven and 38. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. 
And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name ben -Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So the Ammonites and Moabites came from this sinful act in Genesis 19, and they both turn out to be the enemies of God. This was a crazy chapter. But this is what happens when every man does that which is right in his own eyes.